to individualize questions. And if not, maybe you stage your own town hall. Invite the candidates to your own community and uh, have them there to answer questions. Uh, uh, again, it's great to see the enthusiasm tonight, but for the particularized questioning, you're going to have to uh, follow one of those alternatives. Okay, so uh, I'm just, I was given a, a a cheat sheet here, thank God. <laughs> and I'm just going to go through the candidates one at a time. However, uh, because we have three candidates who are not um, running in uh, against any opposition, I thought we might call on them first, identify yourself, and uh, um, you use up to three minutes, and then you're welcome to stay up here, but you're also welcome to excuse yourself. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Sarah, why don't you start? Okay. <laughs> then we can just get out of the way. <laughs> I, I will keep my um, comments sh short because I know that we're not the ones people are really here for. But I want to start with my name because I know everybody has a hard time pronouncing my last name. <laughs> you notice <laughs> so I, I avoided it. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. And this usually helps. So it's Supahan. Um, and I, um, I live in Burnt Ranch, and I have lived there since 2003. Um, prior to that, I lived in Orleans in uh, Humboldt County, and that's where I raised my three kids. And, um, and I've been in education for about 32 years. I had to count it up, because I couldn't believe it. Um, I began working in Trinity County in 2008 as the superintendent at Burnt Ranch School. Um, but that was part-time, so I also was part-time uh, superintendent principal in other districts, including in Del Norte County and Shasta County. Um, I've been at the County Office of Education since 2012. I had served as a deputy superintendent under Bettina Blackwell, who's over there before she retired, um, last June. And at that time, the County Board of Education appointed me superintendent of schools. Um, I wanted to give you a little bit of background about what that job is. Um, the position of County Superintendent of Schools was actually established in the California State Constitution in 1879. Um, it's continued to evolve the changing needs of schools and students since then. Um, for example, in 1992, AB 1200 was passed, which requires our county office to now oversee the budgets of all the districts in the county, we have nine districts, um, to make sure that they're, fiscal, they're fiscally solvent, essentially. Um, in 2013, when a lot of things changed in the state, we now are responsible for um, accepting, reviewing, and approving uh, districts' plans, the LCAP, if you've ever heard of that. Um, that's part of our job at the county office. Uh, we're required to ensure that teachers in districts have the correct qualifications and we're able to um, provide temporary certificates to teachers who might need them if they're being processed by the state because they're really slow. Um, we are also to provide a forum to identify local priorities for child care and related policies. Uh, we provide direct services to some of the really small districts. And basically, just um, we provide services to our schools. We consider ourselves a service or organization, and we do what we can that uh, meets their needs. That's it. Okay, thanks. Um, Angie Bickle, why don't you go next? For those of you who don't know me, I'm Angie Bickle. I, to give you a little bit of my personal history, I was born and raised here in Trinity County. I just celebrated my 25th wedding anniversary with my husband, Don Bickle. We have raised two sons here in Trinity County, and one of my sons blessed me with a wonderful daughter-in-law and two absolutely adorable grandchildren. Um, out in the front, there is a packet of information that I was anticipating that we were going to be having our three minute closing statement so that I could try to give some information that I think is very valuable to the public. But so please grab one since apparently we're not doing that tonight. And it will also, if there's not enough, it'll be available on my website. But there's a lot of information out there that I find that is not accurate. So I would like for you to take advantage of it, 
Um, for example, like property taxes, people believe that, hey, I pay my property taxes, so why aren't you funding the sheriff's department? Well, the truth be known, for every dollar you pay into the county, 32 cents comes to actually into the county's general fund, 64 cents goes to the schools, and the remaining four cents goes to the special, special, special districts that were in existence prior to Prop 13. Um, in regards to my work experience, I've worked for Trinity County for over 26 years. Of that, over 23 years has been in the auditor's office. I started working out in the entry level position as an account clerk one and quickly promoted up to the assistant auditor, which was seven position, positions in between. I held the assistant auditor position for seven years and then in February 2014, the board appointed me as the interim auditor controller. Um, I requested that public defender actually be removed from the realm of the auditor controller, but I didn't get my wishes. So I was pleased to um, pleased to announce that based on some work I did with an RFP, um, I was able to reduce the general fund's cost for public defender by four hundred thousand dollars. So that's a huge savings to the general fund. Um, Based on all those years of working in the auditor's office, I've actually gained a vast amount of knowledge, which has been proven to be very beneficial to the citizens, county departments, my staff, and pretty much everybody that I've dealt with. So I'm very thankful for the amount of years I've actually served. Um, I have a wonderful staff of five employees. I consider them part of my family. We work together as a team in every aspect, whether it's a small task to a large task. I remember taking home envelopes and having to fold paper manually and stuff them in the envelopes and lick them because of the fact we had a mass mailing going out that needed to get done. So I really want to thank my staff. I've worked with them from a period of three and a half years up to 15 years ago in the office with me. Um, I believe that honesty and transparency are two big aspects for my position and that's one, two things I will say that I have and I will continue to have. I may, it may be very, I'm not a very, I'm a very direct person when it comes to how I speak. And with that dinging, that apparently means to cut it off. And three minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Eric Hereford, just attorney. Angie used up most of my time, so. <laughs> I'm not going to take the whole three minutes because there's a lot of candidates here tonight who I think perhaps who most of you are here to hear from. Uh, so if any of you have any questions about me or the office of the district attorney, please call me at the office. You can stop by and talk to me. You can catch me tonight. Um, happy to answer any questions any of you have. Thank you. All right, thanks, Erica. Now, 